Now I request Professor Mondel to give his colloquium on overview and status of India-based Newton Observatory. Thank you. Okay, for giving your time for this uh, colloquium and for inaugurating our lab. And uh, I want to basically give you an overview and the status of this project and it is a really a big project and uh, it is actually the first time probably we are trying uh, such a such an effort uh, uh, in such a large number and uh, uh, here so you know uh, there will be many pitfalls and we have to overcome that but hopefully we will be there so so as you know um, as uh, Dr. Kakutkar has mentioned, uh, this is the uh, mega science project funded by the Department of Science and Technology and Department of Atomic Energy Government of in, uh, India. And uh, the project will uh, lead to what I wish to have creation of a world class underground laboratory in the country for carrying out research in the emerging field of neutrino physics. However, it will develop into a full fledged underground laboratory over the years for other studies in physics, biology, and geology. And then, of course, in involvement of the universities in a big way for carrying out large basic science projects, healthy development of the university research lab partnership. Associated with that, as we, Dr. Kagutkar pointed out, a center at Mysore for particle physics and detector technology and its varied application in areas like medical imaging. And one of the most important aspects of this is the development of the manpower for the future projects in the country. So I know graduate school will lead to PhD in particle physics and more importantly, creating highly skilled scientific manpower for experimental high energy nuclear physics. Hands on training on all aspects of experiment with strong emphasis on detector development is a key component of this training. That's what we want to hope. Well, this is a picture in this room that happens in 1st May 2005 when we presented to Dr. Kakotkar and, uh, and also to DST uh, our, 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 our first uh, idea of this project and uh, we presented him with these uh, three volumes of uh, documents uh, that uh, underline that time how we are going to have this project and this is actually the three volumes and uh, this is actually a, a INSA proceedings where we have actually studied the current status that time of the neutrino physics that is all over is done and what we can do in INO and of course these two are specifically about the INO this is the project itself and this is the various sites that is uh, this experiment is possible of course over the last uh, few years after that we have produced many work many and these are all documented and there are many other documents that was produced. Uh, this is a version of uh, upgraded version of the original project document. Then we have a very thick, detailed project report on the site and the cavern and how we'll build the labs. Various that is uh, that is documented in this doc in this project report volume one. And there is another big volume on the structure, how the detector will be built. I mean, all the engineering details of uh, how the detector will be built. Of course. Uh, when we are doing that one, we also have to be concerned with the environment and we are going to go to a place where we will be creating, I mean, it has to be under a mountain, so it will be near some forest or somewhere. So we have to be concerned about the environment. So we produced two volumes about our, our the studies of the environment concern and how we are going to address to various environmental issues when we are making this lab. And they are all documented in this, uh, these documents here. In addition, of course, we have uh, several other smaller documents that has come all the way along this uh, in this during these last several years of our work, and this all these works will be covered in a series of colloquium uh, that's uh, going to be here. And uh, this is actually in the next talk. Piyus Varma will be talking about the mechanical structure of the ICAL detector, then the magnet design. Vivek will uh, give us a you know what we are in the ICAL magnet design. Then we will have the Suresh Kalmani talking about the gas system for the ICAL detector. We are going to have a recirculation system. Then the DAC system for the ICAL prototype that is we have right now uh, will be given by Suresh Upadhyaya and then Chandraksha will talk about how we will go from this prototype to the final detector where we have to miniaturize the electronics in terms of VLSI and ASIC designs. Then of course using that VLSI and ASIC chips, how we will make the final data acquisition system that will be covered by Satyanarana. Then that is the, uh, the, this one is the, on the software side, we have to have the event generator how, and the simulation code and the reconstruction and a lot of progress has been made here. That will be covered by Govinda Mujumdar. And then in the process, we are developing various online tools 
that will be covered by Deepak Samuel and some of the uh, web utilities and online tools that we have developed in the process or implemented will be covered by Nagraj. So this is our idea and now uh, to, in a nutshell what we are doing here and as we said that uh, I know collaboration is now um, have uh, a large number of institutions from the country uh, from all corners of the country there are 25 institutions currently uh, in the I know collaboration. Now I have only few transparencies on the physics, today is not I am going to talk about the physics. So this is just to tell you that we have two phase approach. In the first phase we are going to use the atmospheric neutrinos for carrying out physics uh, that we want to do with this one. However, in the next phase we are already in, uh, in close collaboration with the international neutrino community uh, where there is a plan to build a neutrino factory somewhere in Europe or in Japan and then they need a neutrino uh, detector at a distance of uh, what they call the magic baseline which is 7000 kilometers or so and now a detector happened to be in the right distance so that is why we are in close collaboration and when this neutrino factory and if and when it comes and we will be there with our detector. Now this is the phase one let me talk about that we want to use the atmospheric neutrinos so what you have to have a detector characteristics should have a large mass something like 50 to 100 kiloton good tracking and energy resolution so it has to be a tracking calorimeter good directionality you have to find out the upward going track from the downward going track so it has to have a nanosecond time resolution because that is what you will be using then the charge identification uh, because that is one of the from the neutrinos and anti neutrinos you want to see separately and what that is the first time we will be seeing that uh, if we have a uh, you know charge identification capabilities uh, ease of construction then modularities and complementary with the other existing and proposed detectors and we want to plan to use a massive iron calorimeter with RPC as the active detector element so what is the ongoing R&D activities that is going on development of various materials processes infrastructure tools required for the detector R&D development of registered plate chamber is the major part of our uh, you know, R&D work that uh, last several years. Development of this various uh, hybrid and ASIC based font and electronics and a VME based data acquisition system. Till now we are using a CAMAC based but uh, ultimately we have used the VME based and we have today actually we have inaugurated the VME based data acquisition system uh, for the first time so it is working there. So it is, we are almost there and the design of this uh, how we will be having this magnet and how we will be constructing that one, what is the field, what is the coil, what is the current, all those things. Then the simulation and even reconstruction software packages and uh, this is another part. Then uh, development of setting up of web based tools and then participation of remote collaborators in various R&D efforts, how we are going to work together uh, even you know on a day to day basis when you have uh, collaborators in various countries, uh, various states or even various countries, how we will be working together that is also we need tools for that and of course I know training school is a part of that and we are also working for the last few years for the site selection issues. So now coming back to the detector, the detector will be basically a magnetized iron calorimeter as, you, as I told you, there will be three magnets, uh, separate one, each one is 16 meter by 16 meter by 12 meters height and there will be something like 140 to 150 layers depending upon the thickness of the iron plate that will be used finally. And then they will be just stacked one above the other, I will show you engineering details later. And then in this in between there will be sandwiched is the RPC and each of these RPCs will be 2 meter by 2 meter and they will be all you know instrumented. So whenever a neutrino comes, interact, produce the charged particles, they will be tracked along this one and depending upon which direction they are going, or you will be knowing whether you are going upward or downward or no. However, uh, the, the question comes that when this experiment is uh, really mind-boggling in the numbers, in terms of simple numbers, and uh, when I say the largest basic science project in the country, this is not to just say it is the biggest project, but to tell you what is the, you know, the big number that we have here. And uh, the, the, for example, there is three and a half a million electronic channel, there are 27,000 RPCs that we have to build, and so on. So these are the challenges that we have here. And to keep the quality control at that level, uh, so that we see that all the detectors is working together. Uh, so now let me talk about the RPC a little bit. Uh, the RPC is a new entry in the particle detectors and uh, it is actually introduced in the all in the 80s but it has developed uh, slowly in the 90s and uh, even in, uh, in the current decade uh, its uh, development took place. And the basic idea is just like a old spark chamber, many of you know, uh, you have the two layers here and instead of a 
conductor in the case of Park chamber, these are actually non-conducting, something like a glass or bakelite, and you keep them uh, with a gap of uh, very little, two millimeters, it can be even you know, few hundred uh, micron or few hundred, uh, you know, point five millimeter or so or even less, uh, if you want to use it for timing and better timings like you know, hundreds of picoseconds or so. But anyway, this is two millimeter gap here. And then you have basically, you apply a very high voltage, something like 10 kilovolts, and whenever a charged particle will go through, it will create a local spark. That means the current will be flowing, and this will be picked up by these strips, and which is put in orthogonal direction. So you'll get both an X and Y position of which the track has gone through. And then you have many such uh, collection of points along the track, and then you will be you'll be go to the computer and reconstruct the track and find out everything about energy, momentum and other things of that one. So that is the idea. So we started, this is our RPC, actually this is not the first RPC, first RPC even it's smaller, this is just a 30 centimeter, 30 centimeter RPC, that's what we had started a few years back and then because we didn't know anything about the RPCs, so but we went ahead, built a stack of those RPCs and then, you know, and the gas recovery system and all those things and we started tracking me on, that is what always we wanted to see the, our final aim is to track charged particles and if that works, that means it is working and we did find a lot of good tracks here, not only that, we can also characterize the RPCs in terms of their efficiency, they are better than 90% efficient. Here you can see this is the efficiency of the RPC. Here is the timing, how timing is good and this line is around you know, nanosecond or so. This is, the, this is the limitation of a scintillator, plastic scintillator uh, based timing. We can do better than that one using this RPC and uh, that is there. And then there are other things like cross talks and uh, all other things and they look very promising. And uh, then we move, and then at the same time we are using uh, glass RPCs here. Similar kind of efficiency plot, etc. Current was studied using a bakelite based RPCs at Calcutta at uh, Science Institute uh, there, and it is still continuing. So you know we are parallelly having two different approaches, and uh, that's a good thing to do. When we are making those small RPCs and we are thinking about that we have to make bigger and bigger RPCs, we have to develop these various materials. So went to the local industry and then started building these spacers. This is precise 2 millimeter gap here so that the glasses will be put on top and bottom. These are the buttons which will be putting at different places. This is the precision 2 millimeter one and there are three holes so that you put the glue. So glue will be basically connecting the top and bottom glass plates through, this, uh, through these buttons also and then there will be some gas inlet and outlet so this will be designed properly and then you put them together and how this will look like this is the spacer plane space line spacer then at the corner you put them and this is the gas inlet and then again continue with the plane spacer and this is the glass and then in the glass many places you have the middle these buttons Okay, the one thing is that when you, how you apply the electric field, so glass will not, even, you cannot apply electric field to the glass because it will not conduct at all. So we put a conducting coating of, uh, of graphite on the surface uh, of the glass plate and then you can apply high voltage and it will be get distributed all over the area uh, that it is and it has to have a, some precise values of the, of the surface resistivity, uh, something like a megaohm per square and uh, to get uh, to keep the characteristics of the decay constant etc of the pulses that I'm not going detail but this is also a non-trivial task to have the correct printing and correct resistivity so we, we interacted with the Neurolec here a local company uh, who are making the paints and they actually help us in developing this conducting paint and which first we use in our garage itself uh, to develop the first such one then I moved to the industry and then, then we have to make a large scale so you can see here this is a conveyor belt on which this glass will be played and there will be spraying guns on the top and then the belt will be moving with our glass in that one painted uh, into this um, in a large number and this has also been developed and we have used these uh, facilities uh, to paint some of our glasses and uh, they are also working very fine. Of course, another important part of this gas mixing is unit. So this is a precisely how to make these uh, various gases. So that is, this is also was developed with a local uh, company and put in a, a ex um, you know, TIFR person who has now gone out and uh, set up his own uh, testing. So we collaborated with him, and uh, you know it's not just ordering something because it doesn't exist. So we have to collaborate with him, and then over, even we are now collaborating uh, even now uh, for developing the recirculation system. But basically, it's a mass flow controller based uh, mixture and then you just various you know uh, the safety bubblers and uh, gas uh, output bubblers and all those things are there and this is also a good development that took place then we when we have succeeded that one now we move from those 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter to 1 meter by 1 meter RPCs that was our next step 
and you can see here uh, this is actually the fabrication and in the beetle that white spot are those spacer that is there so bottom plate is there and then put this pressure put the top glass plate then it is ready this is the gap now you have to have the pickup strip so you put the bottom pickup strip put that rpc then put a top pickup strip in the orthogonal direction and pack it up and then put the electronics to the strips uh, that is there and then it is ready uh, to put into the uh, cosmic ray stack which will come little later but while we are doing that one our final goal is to make two meter by two meter rpc and that's actually non trivial to handle because two meter by two meter rpc which is three millimeter thick is just like a puppet so how to handle that one so we developed that is where this new lab is uh, coming handy and uh, as soon as the lab was handed over to us within a you know within a couple of weeks we set up everything and uh, we just started making this rpc there so this is how we do we have a table here and then this is a actually vacuum cup you know vacuum cup which will go by a by a, by, a, by a chain pulley block and then it will basically bring that glass plate and adjust nicely onto the bottom then you put a mask and these are the places where you put the buttons so you put the glue there and then if you took took away the mask that's how it will look like on the glass uh, the the glue uh, buttons are there then the non trivial part is to bring the top glass plate and exactly match with each other and uh, you know precisely because that's very important so the uh, and then this is the bottom uh, these are these stuff that we are talking about and then you make it glue it whole thing but the problem is you have to glue the other side of this spacer so this the whole table on which this is done the table itself has to turn upside down and it goes there with the rpc and then you open up and then you glue the other side and that's how it is there right now and uh, we have the first rpc is made there so here a journey through the rpc road as i said here is satnayana on his uh, on his left hand here he has this uh, first rpc that we made is 10 cm by 30 cm then we move down 30 cm by 30 cm rpc then we move to this 1 meter by 1 meter rpc that is the rpc that we have made a cosmic ray stack right now and using meons uh, tracking here and then finally behind satnayana is our final 2 meter by 2 meter rpc and i can claim probably today that this is the largest single particle detectors exist in the country now okay so here it is is this stack now and uh, with this 1 meter by 1 meter rpc and uh, they are basically now instrumentalized all the electronics there all the data acquisition system is can uh, probably do not see clearly but it is working 24 hours for last two years almost and collecting this meons something like you know Uh, one lakh or uh, millions per day, and you can actually largest. It can be very larger than that, but it is our old Kamak-based data acquisition system, which was a limiting factor uh, to detect this mion. But anyway, you can see this mion goes beautiful pulses that we get from one of these uh, RPCs. It's a very beautiful pulses. And then using that, this is the pulse height uh, distribution. This is the timing distribution. If you take the width of that, that will give you that one nanosecond resolution that we are talking about. and this is a beautiful track uh, going through this uh, going through this track and that's what we ultimately want to see in our ino detector these tracks well uh, today we have a vme based data acquisition system which is working and uh, it is actually very very fantastic thing lot of things we can do lot of user interface graphical user interface monitoring purposes is beautiful now and uh, the software and the hardware setup has been put up and uh, this is the rpc strap which gives you this x and y strip data then there is the analog front end digital front end this is analog pulse amplified and then it goes to a digital front end where it will go for monitoring as well as for event recording and trigger generation and then finally this uh, this things is there this linux based data uh, dac software using c++ qt and root it's a, a combination of that and then it uh, basically has the interrupt based multi threaded uh, graphical user interface is online 2d 3d event display all you can see rpc strip monitoring continuously online error reporting you have two stages 10 gain and then 10 gain here actually you are using 80 instead of 100 gain but that's okay this is the type of front end uh, amplifier that we have then we have this front end analog cards where the analog pulse comes and they get discriminated and uh, then they convert into digital pulses and then the digital processing there is some routing card and then finally there are many control cards in the camac that time which has now been replaced and and getting into the vme because then 
because we are using now the VME card. And in the process, there are APGA, CPLD, HMC, and 5 and SMD, etc., or various kinds of software as well as hardware has been gone into this, uh, this one. So, however, you can see that this kind of electronics, of course, is power hungry. You can't use it for when you are using talking about three and a half a million channel. So we have to do something there. I will come to that little later. But I am showing you some of these tracks that we have seen in this uh, in these tracks. Beautiful tracks. This is the two tracks with a vertex here. You know some interactions here. Uh, some interaction in the probably in the wall of our building uh, producing more than uh, one track and uh, so on. So this is the type of thing that we have seen there. Now this is showing the beauty of these RPCs. This is the strip multiplicity due to crossing muons. When the muons is going, how many strips is getting hidden in that one RPC? You can see it's mostly one, sometimes zero. This is the inefficiency part, sometimes two, three, that's all. This is the track resi residue in millimeter because when you are fitting a track, then how far your hits are there. So this is also very nice. Uh, this is actually, sorry. Uh, this is important. This is the imaging of the RPC. You use all those cosmic remion and then point out where it is hitting your RPC. And you will immediately start seeing the buttons. Because if it uh, buttons is there, then the meon goes through, you will not get a hit there. So that shows the imaging power of such an, uh, such an uh, device that we are building. And there is a only, or this is the strip noise monitoring rate. We have to monitor continuously the noise rate, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And this is actually the monitoring rate that we are doing that. There is a day-night variation due to temperature, etc. Because the temperature changes the, um, the resistance of the glass and that will change in terms of the resistance across the gap and so on. So there is a correlation there and that can be seen. While this RPC development is going on, actually we have, we are very proud that we have been in the RPC map of the world and, and we are actually one of the now recognized largest RPC you know, lab here and we have, and as a result of that one, we, we have been given to organize this international conference on resistive plate chambers and related detectors. This happens every two years and the, the last one happened in TIFR and uh, this was the, you know, very good, uh, this one. Of course, this is the front page of the proceeding that is coming out and uh, this is the, uh, that the proof is still there, so I just uh, put it there. And this is coming in the NIM volume. Uh, this is now talking about these electronics and cards that we are talking about. So you saw these, these amplifiers here in these RPCs. However, this is occupying a lot of space. This is a dead space. We can't afford that. We have to put this electronics miniaturized and put on top of that one, just like here. This is the RPC module, so that I can put the next RPC next to that one. So this miniaturization will be possible only when where we are, hybrid preamplifier we are here, to acid based where we want to go. That is, the, that is our next, uh, next frontier that we want to cover. And we are, we are there, we are coming slowly there. And uh, Chandratra is somewhere in the auditorium, this one uh, room here. And then uh, and he is uh, basically designing two or such um, amplifier, one based upon some sun based older uh, amplifier and one is his, I mean, uh, completely new approach for the INO. And uh, this is the design is ready. This is actually based upon the 0.35 micron technology here. And uh, this design, uh, and this shows them uh, basically the simulated uh, how we will get the uh, pulse shape and things like that and uh, what kind of fast uh, they are. And uh, he's quite happy that he get a rise time of something like, uh, I think 1.2 nanosecond or so. And then this is the other one that he is talking about, is the improved architecture. It's actually, if you see there, one, one important point uh, what I should mention, he is talking about uh, a power consumption or power budget of 10 milliwatt or so here. And you go to the, his next design, he claimed that uh, you can even reduce that. But amazing. And uh, yeah, I think number is much smaller here, somewhere uh, here, 4 milliwatt uh, there. So this is, uh, and then he has simulated that uh, how the pulses and uh, how the bandwidth and all those things. So this is now will be given to the uh, the fab lab for fabricating and testing. And we have uh, two approaches, and uh, we are uh, we are thinking of. And uh, the I think Chandrasekhar will be probably when he gives his talk, he'll talk about more and uh, how how we'll be uh, getting the first lot now from the fab, uh, factory, and we'll be testing that. Of course, we have to go through you know few iteration, but we are there. We are we are we are, we are thinking of that direction. So this is really this one. In this connection, I just wanted to talk about that a uh, little bit about our uh, the the first part, TI for Foundation Day talk. Dr. Kakotka reminded us about the missing the microelectronics revolution in India. However, we need to be at par in acid design and fabrication with the rest of the world. 
Actually, we know that we do have within DA family the necessary design expertise. But right now, we have to design and we have to give it outside for fabrication. So probably, if we have a latest VLSI fabrication facility, that will probably expertise uh, this uh, kind. We have VLSI expert, but the type of technology we are talking, I mean, we have to upgrade probably. I think maybe Chandrati will be knowing more on that one. Okay, so using that electronics, how you'll be putting them, now we have the thinking about the total data acquisition system of the final. So here is your RPC, one RPC, and there will be 128, 0 to 127, uh, so many pulses, so many strips coming out, and they will be pre-amplified and discriminated here. Now using that, you have to, how do you trigger? So you have to recognize the pattern of hits into those RPCs. So this is actually done something called pre-trigger generator within that RPC, how many hits and things like that. We also have to monitor them continuously the noise rate. So they go through a multiplexer to a scalar. And then finally, when the, the timing information as well as the hit RPC is here. And then at some stage we will be taking data back. And this can be one unit. This is one way of going that one. But we are getting more adventurous and we are thinking of uh, maybe a triggerless system. And this is a, you know, these this days people are, uh, you know, fancy things is to have a triggerless system where you timestamp every pulse from every strip of the RPC, okay, with a clock. And then you later on, in your software, you just generate the trigger, see what kind of pattern it is, that's it. Of course, if the rate is too high, it is difficult, that one. So since we will be underground, our rate is low, probably it is, uh, it is possible to uh, use this tape. And this will be really a fancy thing, and people are thinking, I'm imagining this one, is really good thing. So we are going to, we, final decide, decision has to be taken, but we have enough time to make the final decision. Now about uh, what is going on in the magnet uh, design. Now let me move to, this is our first magnet uh, that we have built. It's a small one, but it's a small beginning. And this is a 12 layer, uh, um, small 2 meter by 2 meter size. You can see the coil in the middle. And this is the magnetic fill uh, that it, uh, it has actually uh, generated and uh, with the, using this coil. And this is now sitting at uh, VCC Kolkata and uh, where we will be putting the same RPCs there and in a magnetic field. So they will give you a curved track instead of a straight track there. However, so how will we be constructing the ion ical detector? The idea is here, this has been actually we are working on that with the Tata Consulting Engineers for, uh, for a year or so and they have um, some ideas that we have this 4 meter by 2 meter each plate and then this plate and these are the spacers which two holes or the pins will be alignment pins. So alignment pins will be basically make sure that the top next plate you come in right place and there is alignment uh, is there and then you built up that uh, one layer and then these are the RPCs, you put them and uh, this is how it will be built. However, and finally there has to be a coil also, this is the coil there, magneting coil, and slowly you build the whole uh, one unit of 16 meter by 16 meter by 12 meter, and then the RPCs you don't have to put at the beginning, you have a two trolley in the both side, and where the RPCs will be pushed inside this one through a road, and then, you know, this is, this we want to practice because sometimes you may have to take away some RPCs from, uh, from malfunction RPCs and replace it by a good one. So that provision has to be there. But we can, we can do it this way. So this is the detailed mechanical design of that one. Now what about, about the magnet? I mean, how do we get the, how much current is required? So we have a simulation package, uh, which is uh, um, called the magnet. And uh, this is uh, uh, basically, you have the one detector, but it is very difficult, such a big, huge magnet to simulate. So what they have done, they have taken one eighth of that one and simulated that. And then you can basically, by symmetry, you can, you can now get the fill of the whole magnet. So that is the idea here, and this work has been continuing, and this shows some of these, you know, different, depending upon different ampere turns, what is the field that will be reached, and then also the effect of the gap, because sometimes the plate will not be aligned properly, so if you have a gap between the plates, how much is the field that will be losing, etc., uh, that exercise is also uh, going on and, uh, on, and on, on track. And when we are doing that, we have to also, we are going to get steel or the, for, for the magnet. And then how do I know the BH characteristics of that one? So we have already developed a small gadget here, which is uh, basically, uh, this is the BH curve tracer, which will be used for macroscopic sample testing. How is the BH curve on that? And uh, that is now, you know, functional. And, uh, you know, you can see that we have taken some sample and measuring that BH curve so that we can really feed this information into our simulation code to finally know what is the ampere turn that will be required for the type of magnet material that is the steel that we are getting from the steel company. Now let me move on to the simulation framework. We have already have a well 
um, developed a program here and packages here. So simulation framework has different stages. First comes the neutrino event generator. This neutrino event generator, of course, we have not developed it, but we have adopted it. That is the that is what happens in in a, in, a, in, a, in any international collaboration. Is that you know this is you know somebody people uh, generated. So this event generator is used uh, is called nuance. This is the same generator uh, which is also the Kamiokande people are using. And uh, here it gives the basically uh, the various reaction uh, channel and then vertex information and energy momentum of the particle that is produced in the neutron interaction. And using that, then we have the our G based upon our geometry, uh, the whole detector simulation is uh, one thing that we have to do. And there you basically allow the particle through our detector and generate the hits inside the detector, and the energy deposits and momentum information will be there. So this is there. Then next to that one, this is the ideal situation. Now you have to have the digital you have to put in the noise, throw in the noises, etc. That is also put. And finally, now use that one as if a real event has taken place. Now you reconstruct that event and then see whether you get back the same original direction of the neutrino, its energy or not. So this is the procedure and this is uh, actually the whole chain is now working and uh, there is a framework, a root based framework in the, in, the, in, the, in the back of it so that you know, there is the interface of all this one. And here I want to tell you this one because this particular part of work is where we are also collaborating with the international neutrino factory community because they want to have a similar detector and then we are testing each other, each other program and then you know, complementing each other in that direction and that is a, we have a meetings also and uh, where we present our data data, they present their data and things like that. Okay? So this is for example uh, one of the simulated neutrino event where is the quasi elastic or something where a muon is going, this is the neutrino, this is the vertex actually and then you can see this, X, uh, this two projection of the track and because of the magnetic field you can see the bending of the track, the real data. And then using that track resolution, etc., we are finding out what will be the momentum resolution of, uh, of this, uh, this one, depending upon what is the kind of magnetic field you are using, what is the kind of noise you fit, fit in, and, uh, and see how much you get uh, damaged and things like that. So this work is going. And then also there is something, uh, other than the muon, there is also hadron like pion, so how much their energy resolution and uh, expected from this detector. Now let me go to the site. Uh, the site is uh, will be has to be in a under mountain because we have to filter out the cosmic rays and uh, the preferred site is uh, here uh, there is in uh, in Masinagudi in uh, South India uh, we have this mountain uh, which is uh, the peak is uh, 22707 meters and here somewhere uh, we want to make a tunnel an access tunnel and inside we want to set up uh, this uh, structure of underground cavern where the lab will be located there will be two cavern in that one. This is all engineering details are done and it is ready for actually given for construction. So there will be two tunnels. One cavern is very big. This will be actually take care of not even our current 50 kiloton but even much more than that. And 50 kiloton will take all one third of the one third of the length here. And this is the total size of that cavern. And there will be another smaller cavern uh, which is uh, for other small experiment like double beta decay and others will be located in that one. And in principle there are also tunnel all around. For example, there is a tunnel will be ended here and you can even use this part of the tunnel to do smaller experiment uh, set up there. Okay, so this is the underground lab. Now, in that one also we have done lots of work. For example, originally this is the location of the lab and these are the access tunnel. We had uh, four, four options of the access tunnel and depending upon which option you take, uh, the, the vertical over button increases and the of course tunnel length of the increases. However, after talking that time, with, uh, especially with the environmentalist and, uh, and uh, especially with, uh, Raman Sukumar, uh, who is an, uh, from ecology department of IISC, he suggested that uh, you move uh, don't take that one because there is the elephant corridor which is closer to that one and take this one where which is close to the TNAB campus and then you are inside the campus then you are so we are where, where option is uh, you know the second tunnel or even even this tunnel which can use some of the existing tunnel also. So these are the two hour option and this is the length if you see we will get something like 1300 meter over burden uh, uh, on, on that uh, for that option. Now let me just go to something what you call, when you are running such a big collaboration, how do you collaborate with each other, with the remote people? So we have to develop those and many of those things now we have not developed here, means we have not built those, uh, this thing, but we have implemented that one uh, from our uh, developed, some of them, some of them has been developed by, by CERN, some of them has been developed by Slack and so on, but we have implemented all of them and I am just telling you some of them. For example, 
uh, here is what you call the electronic logbook. I mean, when you work in a lab, everything has to be recorded every day what is going on. But we are working here. You saw there are people working at uh, BRC. There are people working at Science Institute. And how do we know what is going on in day-to-day -day basis? Everything is recorded in the electronic lab. Now, and that is one thing that uh, we are doing that one. This is accessible through web. Then agenda server. For example, we have the meeting. And when you are meeting each other at different places, we have to have our uh, uh, talks loaded into the agenda server so that everybody can load their talk even two minutes before the talk starts and then everybody in the whole over the world can access to their talk. Then we have the what you call the INO wiki page. This is basically to produce all the documents. Whatever you are producing, there has to be manual, there has to be things like that. So that you can do online using the wiki facilities. And then that is true at this moment and show you some of these uh, some of these things and then I will come back here. So just, I mean it is, okay. So this is actually now I am to show you this one. This is right now online data taking that is going on in our upstairs lab and you can see the time there and this is actually is available to the whole world. However you are, you can monitor what is going on in the lab. So this is actually, we have developed ourselves and we are working that one. So this is one good thing for the collaboration to look at and see how it is going on. Now there is this, I will show you, here is some, for example, this is the Indico server we have set up and where you can put your meeting talks, you can go any of them one and then you know you can, you can go back and then this is the meeting, you go through that one and you will, you will get there all the talks and what has happened, you can even download those talks and then have a, have a, have a meeting, fruitful meeting there and this is all, uh, all there. Then you can have, this is our Hyper new discussion forum. There are various discussion items there, and you can put up. You can you can you can member list how many how many people are basically accessing that. And if you see right now, we have something like 80 80 members uh, who is access. these are all password protected. So you have to be members. Then only you can go and uh, and uh, various things that is there. And then you can uh, go and uh, for example, you can look into some of these uh, things. And then you can look into news and alignments. And um, you know, for example, if there is a news, and then you can have a thread and all those things, and uh, and you can put up uh, some idea and uh, all those things there. This is one thing. Then, okay, this is I. Uh, this is actually the interesting thing is the logbook that we are talking about. This logbook has this uh, various folder for TIFR, BRC, IIT, Science Institute, IMSC in general, and all those things. And you go to one of those, uh, let's say TIFR folder, and then again, and then there are various subfolders. We are talking about our RPC lab, DAQ, gas system, electronics, inventory, all those things. And if you go there in, uh, in this one, and it is actually huge, so now it is a day-to-day. -day. So it is actually it tells you, in text you can put up your figure, you can put up your plot there, and all those things can be made available and, uh, and, uh, and available to the uh, whole collaboration, because they are all password protected. So these are some of these uh, things that we are, of course, you are welcome to go through our web page and then you will see there all those various links available there uh, in that uh, web page there. Okay, so let me now, uh, this is some of the tools that we have developed uh, for our collaborators to, to work and, okay, so now from there, so let me now talk about the uh, human resource development and training. So we have two aspects. The INO training school, this is the first batch of uh, INO training school students who are there in the audience there and uh, they are just completing their one year of uh, training and uh, this one. So what we are having here, we have already started this, affiliated to HBNI. At present the INO students are being trained for one year at TIFR Mumbai for both experimental techniques and theory and will be attached to the PhD guide at various collaborating institutes for PhD degree after completion of course work. But they are little different because they have more involved in the lab work every day what is happening. So they have to, in fact their, their project is connected to our software development of this tracking, simulation, reconstruction which will be used by, uh, by, by our uh, by real one. So they are contributing uh, to, to the real uh, through their project. Of course, we also have a visiting students and lab set uh, and so these visiting students for various other universities all the time they are coming and visiting us. Many long term visits of students and faculty from universities in the last several years. Right now there are students from, from Kashmir, from, uh, from Aligarh who are there in our lab and working with us along with the RPCs. We are also providing experimental kits, you know, we want to participate in the, in that uh, training there. So universities and including to uh, universities and even to ISAR, we have provided uh, various, um, you know, setup 
uh, for their students to use, helping universities, some of the universities to set up RPC test facilities at uh, IIT Bombay, at uh, Punjab University and so on, that is going on. Talks and publications, we have ever increasing request for INO talks from every international conferences in the field and uh, sometimes you know, it is very difficult for us to provide uh, the, 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 the names because you need you know, funding and uh, to go to the places but that is always the, you know, uh, even right now uh, there is a conference going on in the Rome and Amol is uh, there uh, to representing, uh, he is giving other talks but also he will be representing INO or there is a lab, um, all the lab representatives meeting is going on there. Uh, the, uh, we are active partner of the International Design Study for a Neutrino Factory Community. This is called IDSNF. This is the community which is designing um, this uh, accelerator or the Neutrino Factory and the associated detector. And our detector is the uh, uh, detector there. So we are very active partner of there. In fact, the next IDSNF plenary meeting will be held at TIFR during 12 to 14 October 2009 where we will be going through some of the design and things like that. A direct interaction and collaboration with leading RPC team in Italy and Japan because the RPC was invented in Italy in uh, Rinaldo Santonico's lab and we are in uh, you know, uh, close touch with him and uh, also the, the KK uh, Japan is the place where the glass RPCs were successfully used for, for many years and, uh, and the people there also are interacting with us. And we have technical collaboration with KEK for electronics, magnet and RPC. I mean the transparencies I showed you uh, in my agenda server is basically from the meeting, last meeting of the KEK physicists and uh, technicians when they came here and we had a um, discussion about the technical details and uh, things like that. So we are going on with those. Now about the project status, so you can see the, pro the prototype RPC stack is operational. A second prototype with magnet is ready at VECC. Electronics etc. is all right. Gas purification and recirculation system is under test. Long term stability of the RPCs will continue with the stack that we, I have shown you in the picture. The INO engineering task force have prepared the detailed project reports of the INO cavern as well as the surface lab. And the detailed project report for the detector structure with all engineering details is also ready. We have approached the environment and forest department for necessary clearance. Although we have the MOEF clearance, we have not yet obtained the state forest clearance that is awaited. The environment impact assessment, environment management plan for the INO lab at Singara Machinagudi has been prepared by reputed environmental organizations. And this EMP compliance, so the EMP asked for certain, you know, we have to follow certain norms and we have agreed to those norms and we have submitted also that to Tamil Nadu government that will follow that compliance. The identification of sources for various components needed for the mass production of glass is in progress. There are certain companies who have shown interest for making, for example, the art pieces and so on. And the land for INO center of Mysore will be provided by the Kannada government. But as, as Dr. Kakudkar mentioned that we don't have yet uh, that land in our hand. Okay. So this is the, um, I thank you on behalf of the INO team and that RPC lab that we just uh, started working. Thank you for your support.